Right now, live at 5, the president says he's leaving the hospital after three days of treatment for COVID-19. His message to the public, to not fear the coronavirus. This as some Minnesota congressmen take heat for getting on a commercial flight after a possible exposure to COVID-19 on Air Force One. How one Duluth organization is keeping the Halloween spirit alive. Coming up tonight, new details regarding a shooting that happened early Sunday morning in Duluth. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look over the city of Duluth on this Monday evening. We're learning more about President Trump's condition after a weekend at Walter Reed Hospital. Plus, this weekend shooting uh, in Duluth was just the latest in a growing trend in the city. Good evening. I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. President Trump tweeted that he's leaving the Walter Reed Medical Center this evening, and he's advised his supporters not to be afraid of the coronavirus. Natalie Brand has more details from outside the Walter Reed Medical Center. President Trump sent a flurry of tweets this morning from the presidential suite at Walter Reed. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told Fox News the president could be discharged as early as today. The president, in consultation with the doctors, will make a uh, decision on whether to uh, discharge him uh, later today. But questions remain about the president's condition. The president's doctors now acknowledge he had a high fever on Friday and say his oxygen levels dropped twice. We've also learned the president has been given the steroid dexamethasone in addition to remdesivir and an experimental antibody cocktail. The question is, is his disease, disease much more severe than is being described because there's a discrepancy between the potency of the drugs and what's going on? The White House is also facing backlash after the president left his hospital suite Sunday evening to drive by supporters who have taken up vigil outside Walter Reed. Administration officials say the president's doctors approved the trip where he was seen wearing a mask, but health experts say he risked exposing his security detail to the virus. Leaving a hospital, going to a car with other people, is not being quarantined and certainly it is putting people at risk. Prior to that trip, the president released another video where he says he now understands the coronavirus. It's been a very interesting journey. I learned a lot about COVID. White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany, who was not wearing a mask when she briefed reporters Sunday evening, says she tested positive for the coronavirus today. She joins the growing list of people either close to the president or who attended the ceremony for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett, who have since tested positive. Vice President Mike Pence tested negative again this morning. He is still planning to attend Wednesday's vice presidential debate against Democratic candidate Kamala Harris. Meanwhile, three Minnesota congressmen are taking heat for flying home on a Delta Airlines plane from Washington, D.C. U.S. Representatives Pete Stauber, Tom Emmer, and Jim Hagedorn were all on the same Delta Airlines flight despite the airline's restrictions on passengers recently exposed to COVID-19. The flight was Friday night, just two days after they shared Air Force One with President Donald Trump. Minnesota Democratic Party Chairman Ken Martin said the congressmen put the health and safety of other passengers at serious risk. Hagedorn said the three men had tested negative and said the airline knew of their situation. Congressman Pete Stauber says he tested negative for COVID-19 again this morning, five days after flying on Air Force One with President Trump. Today, Stauber said a doctor told him his exposure was, quote, low risk and he should carry about his normal duties. He said he's disappointed with the shaming from Minnesota lawmakers, saying people jumped to conclusions and did not review the facts. Stauber said he takes the virus seriously and will continue to rely on advice from doctors. Meanwhile, spokespeople for Stauber say he's postponed a roundtable discussion here in Duluth. It was originally scheduled for tomorrow. The 8th District Congressman was set to meet with local stakeholders from a variety of industries, including logging and manufacturing. Spokespeople say they postponed the event due to a scheduling conflict. They have not shared a new date or what that conflict was.
In Wisconsin, the state reached another bleak milestone in single-day COVID cases. Wisconsin health officials say the state set a single-day record Saturday with nearly 2,900 positive cases. Uh, the previous re record for new cases in a single day came on Thursday. Health officials also announced 19 deaths on Saturday. The COVID tracking project shows nearly 527 new cases per 100,000 people in Wisconsin over the past two weeks, which ranks third in the country for new cases per capita. We're learning more tonight after three people were shot in Duluth over the weekend. It happened just before 5 Sunday morning in Duluth's Central Hillside neighborhood. Tonight, the Duluth Police Department says they're still looking for a suspect, but the public is not in any danger. CBS 3's John Cardinelli is live where that shooting happened last night. And John, what else are police saying? Kristen, I'm here at North 5th Avenue West and 3rd Street where that shooting happened early Sunday morning that left three injured. Tonight, we're hearing from the Duluth Police Department. They're saying they're looking for a suspect. However, they did not provide us with a description. According to police, shortly after this call, a central reported three gunshot wound victims arrived at their emergency room. That group included a 23-year-old man, a 28-year-old man, and a 32-year-old woman. All three of the victims had non-life-threatening injuries. We don't know much about what led up to this incident, where the victims were shot, or if they're still in the hospital tonight. But police did say today everyone involved knows each other. They added that they do not need the public's help in finding the suspect. And by the way, Kristen, this is the 30th shots fired call Duluth police have responded to this year. And that's not including the officer involved shooting that happened earlier last month. Now, we did ask the police department if this is a record for Duluth. They did not get back to us. They we do know, however, that we have surpassed last year's total. There were 22 shots fired incidents last year, and we'll continue to keep you updated on this as more develops. All right, thanks, John. And we should mention police did not respond to our request for an interview today. We also reached out to Mayor Larson for an interview. She turned down our request, but shared a statement. She wrote that she supports Duluth Police Chief Mike Tuscan. Larson also acknowledged that when people who know each other choose to settle conflicts with guns, it creates fear and uncertainty in the community. Let's head over to Dave for a first look at the weather. Dave, up north, it was a beautiful morning. Yeah, you know, here at the head of the lakes, it was gorgeous as well. And a live look over towards Ashland shows northwestern Wisconsin had a gorgeous day today, thanks to higher pressure grazing into the region. But at the same time, a small low is trying to work in from the northwest, and that's kicking up the winds. And you can see the Ashland camera shaking a little bit and a little bit of chop out there on Schwamigan Bay. Well, that chop is leading to a small craft advisory for the Big Lake tonight, which I'll show you in a couple more minutes. But right now, we show you that low pressure system system tracking through the area dragging its cold front behind it it won't take temperatures down too much we're going to have a warm spell this week but it could create some showers tonight and another shower chance tomorrow so our forecast for Tuesday says there should be some partial sunshine when you start your day with a low temp in the 40s then by lunchtime a 30 percent chance of rain could return especially for Minnesotans and highs in the afternoon hit 65 degrees that's almost 10 degrees warmer than normal and we may not hold on to warmth that warm all week long but most days should be a couple of degrees warmer than normal we'll talk about the temperature trends and point out one day that could crack 70 coming up in a few more minutes yeah not hours <laughs> thanks Dave still to come on live at five a virtual support group for caregivers in Grand Rapids plus the United Way capped off the start of the fundraising season with a virtual 5K. City by City is next. And tonight at 6, we're continuing our coverage of the recent shooting uptick across Duluth. Stay with CBS 3 throughout the 5, 6, and 10 for the latest. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Dante was killed in Pearl Harbor. We had a very hard time getting Dante flown home to Duluth, running into roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Pete Stauber was very much there for us every bit of the way. And he would look at us and he'd say, we're going to make that happen for you. Thursday night, the family of Dante Tini got him back. 
he came through for our family with flying colors. He sees the needs of the people and he fights for them. I'm Pete Stauber and I approve this message. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. It's been said, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And these young artists mirror the best. The masters that came before them. The legacy lives on. Our seniors that are being hit the hardest, they're frightened. And I want them to know that their health and safety will be my responsibility if I'm your president. And I'll have from day one, ready to go, the best medical experts and scientists to advise on our response. And I will not abandon you. It's a simple proposition, folks. We're all in this together. we got to fight this together. We'll emerge from this stronger because we did it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. They're live. They're local. Watch the CBS 3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Mack tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look for Spirit Mountain. Dave will have your full weekday forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look around the region. Emotional support for caregivers in Grand Rapids, plus free COVID testing for residents in Redcliffe. That and more as we take you around the Northland city by city. United Way kicked off its fundraising campaign with a virtual 5K this past weekend. The Lumberjack 5K culminated with a rally at Rapids Brewing Company in Grand Rapids. Runners who participated were able to log their 5K results virtually. Participants were given a t-shirt and the proceeds go toward funding community grants through the United Way. Meanwhile, if you or someone you know works as a caregiver, the Elder Circle of Itasca County is inviting you to take part in their virtual support group. The program will be offered Mondays and Thursdays and is for caregivers of any age. The program offers resources and tools for caregivers who are feeling stretched too thin. And finally, we'll finish off in Redcliffe, where the Wisconsin National Guard will be running a free COVID testing site all day on Saturday, October 10th. The site will have 450 testing kits available. Pre-registration is not required, but organizers say testing will go faster with it. You can register on the Wisconsin COVID Connect website. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, as we get closer to the holiday, many families are asking, is Halloween on or off? We'll have the details when we come back. Here's a live look at the Ely area where that 30% chance for showers has already paid off. We'll talk about all oh, your chances of getting some of this grease hit tonight and tomorrow, along with a warm spell for the rest of the week. All that coming up right after the break. Season 2 is here, y'all. And yes, I am in an eye patch. How much more, Kelly, can it the get? The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. I will always be ready for every storm and disaster that threatens my community. I will always be there to protect my neighbors and my country. We are the Army National Guard. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. I'm Tina Smith, and I approve this message. Jason Lewis sure has a lot to say about women. He actually said women who care about birth control are brainless. He opposed laws providing health care protections for women. Here's Lewis. It used to be that women were held to a little bit of a higher standard. We required modesty from women. Now, it, it, are we beyond those days where a woman can behave as a slut, but she can't call her a slut? Jason Lewis, wrong for women, wrong for Minnesota.
Arrowhead Supply is your local professional source for kitchen, bath, and countertops since 1973. Whether you're planning to remodel or build new, Arrowhead Supply has a wide range of styles and finishes to choose from. We custom fabricate laminate, quartz, granite, or Corian countertops on site and provide top installation. View all of the new colors, materials, and wood available and receive help from our knowledgeable staff at our Lincoln Park showroom. Arrowhead Supply. Visit us today. Free in-home estimates available. Coming up Tuesday on CBS 3 this morning, continued updates on President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis and treatment. And Tuesday brings another day above average with temperatures back in the 60s. Yeah, so wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. Season 2 is the here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Wolverine RMAX 1000 now at RJ Sport & Cycle. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom it's 102.5. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. All right, we've got a low-pressure system crossing our region right now, despite a high pressure trying to keep it away. And the two together are kicking up the winds towards 15, 20 miles per hour and even higher around the shores of Lake Superior. So what I'm getting at is we have a small craft advisory tonight on Lake Superior. And with the higher pressure bringing a clearer sky to many towns, you may be tempted to get out on the lake. But you might want to think twice. The winds may eventually calm down. And I'm mentioning all of this because I noticed a lot of boats out enjoying the beautiful weekend here. Well, for the most part, the week ahead is going to be beautiful. The winds should eventually slack off. And temperatures tomorrow should be in the mid-60s for a lot of towns. And by later in the week, we might even crack 70 in a couple of places. In between, we could go back and forth temperature-wise a little bit, but in general, for the entire week, it will be warmer than normal. So last week, we paid the price with a cold snap. Now we reap the benefits with a warm spell this week. And here's what we reap right now at the airport in Duluth. Current temp, 64 degrees. Westerly, southwesterly winds running up towards 18 miles per hour, hence that small craft advisory. And the air pressure... Yeah, it's a little bit on the lower side at 29.68 because of that trough of lower pressure working in despite the best efforts of the high to keep the sky sunny. All right, current temperatures, low 60s in the Upper Peninsula, mid to even upper 60s for northwestern Wisconsin. Superior, for an example, is at 67. We have 64 in east-central Minnesota. 60s for much of the North Shore except for Cook County where 50s are going on. That's about normal. Low 60s Ely, mid-50s or another cool spot. Wasabi range close to 60, and border country in the upper 50s. So upper 50s is normal. Many places are already in the 60s, and I think we should be in the 60s for the most part this week, except for Friday when a chance for 70 comes across. Coming across our bow right now is a little bit of light rain activity, as we saw up towards Ely, from that cold front that's moving in fairly rapidly here. And so 30% chance for rain in Minnesota tonight, 20% chance for Wisconsin and the UP, and then another 20% chance will reappear tomorrow here as that low pressure system continues to track by the region. But once we get past Tuesday into Wednesday, higher pressure reasserts itself. It becomes sunny again, and the temperatures stay on the mild side. Like I mentioned, any from about 60 to even 70 degrees through Friday. And the weekend doesn't look like any drastic cool down either. But if you're looking for rain, we're not getting much of that this week. Tonight, though, there is that slight shower chance in Minnesota. With that low temps in the 40s, roughly 40 to 45. For Wisconsin and Michigan, the low temps there will say a narrower band, 42 to 45, and a slighter shower chance, only 20 percent. For tomorrow, it's still a 20 to 30 percent chance in Wisconsin and Michigan. Highs in the mid 60s, and low to mid 60s for Minnesota, with a 20 percent so chance for the showers. And then the showers go away. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a dry period here. With high temps, that could go anywhere from 60 Wednesday and Thursday to 70 on Friday, then back towards 60 for the weekend. Looks good to me. Thanks, Dave. The Supreme Court began its new term today with a remembrance of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Chief Justice John Roberts paid tribute to Ginsburg, who died last month. 
The court resumed its work by phone because of the coronavirus pandemic. The justices are beginning this new term with Republicans on the cusp of a solid conservative majority that might roll back abortion rights, expand gun rights, and shrink the power of government. The Senate could confirm President Donald Trump's nominee for Ginsburg's seat, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, before Election Day. A sought-after holiday is causing some confusion for families across the country. Is Halloween happening or not? As we get closer, more and more COVID-19-friendly events seem to be popping up. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez gives us a breakdown of what's acceptable and what's not. Experts are worried trick-or-treat participants will be handing out more than just candy this year. And what is the value of trick-or-treating versus what is the value of uh, reducing unnecessary COVID hospitalizations and deaths. That's why Mayo Clinic infectious disease expert Pritish Tosh says the thought of going door to door should be put to rest. And I am disappointed personally that the best course of action is not to trick or treat. Meanwhile, a local community outreach program in Duluth says children now more than ever need normalcy. I know as a kid, um, there's a lot of things you look forward to. Pez Davila, director of Neighborhood Youth Services, and his team are busy preparing for their first trunk or treat event. Even though COVID has restricted a lot, we wanted to show people that we can still do something safe and it could be fun. Davila says the event on Lake City Lot in Canal Park is following COVID-19 precautions. People will come in, you'll have a line, we'll make sure they space the park, and we elect a group in at a time. Everyone has to wear masks. Those handing out candy have to wear gloves. Tables will also need to have hand sanitizer at the ready. Though the Central for Disease Control sees events like those as high risk, Davila says his organization is making sure everyone is safe. One way in and then one way out. That way it's not, you know, we don't get crowded and, you know, we have arrows that show them like which ways to go. And the CDC suggests families stay indoors and celebrate with lower risk Halloween activities like carving or decorating pumpkins, having a virtual costume contest or watching a movie. We have not heard from city officials yet if they plan to issue any guidance on trick-or-treating. If you'd like to learn about more ways you and your family can celebrate Halloween, head to our website. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about adoptable pets, and today's pet comes to us from the Precious Paws Humane Society in Chisholm. Meet Freddy. He's a five-month-old English Cocker Spaniel. Freddy, Freddy instantly falls in love with everyone he meets. He is a playful, curious, and high-energy pup. In addition to playing fetch, Freddy's favorite pastime is collecting socks and storing them in his bed. If you're interested in adopting Freddy, you can set up an appointment by calling the number on your screen. Still to come, students in Cloquet are returning to a hybrid learning model following a COVID-19 outbreak across the region. How students will be impacted. The garage, it's your space. Get a garage fit for a king or queen with our Regal Eagle 26 by 28 garage. Store all the equipment needed to rule your kingdom today. No matter what you put in your space, trust us to build it right. Economy garages, built right price. Ready, set, internet. Extreme has the speed and price to get you online fast. Stop waiting and get going for as low as $19.99 a month for a year with speeds from 60 meg up to 1 gig. Powerful in-home Wi-Fi and 99.99% network reliability. Extreme has what you need to stay ahead and stay on track. Hurry and get Extreme Internet for as low as $19.99 a month for one year. Dial 844-EXTREME2. Clean water. Some of us take it for granted. Not me. I'm Beth Myers. I have the honor of representing you in the State Assembly. It wasn't that long ago that my family was struggling. We went seven years without running water. The health of our families and our economy depends on clean water. That's why I'm fighting so hard against special interests who want to pollute our land and water. I'm Beth Myers, and I promise I will never take you or the Northland for granted. I hail from Canada, but I'm not a hockey player. I came here for soccer, but my journey at UWS has turned into much more than just an athletic endeavor. I have a lot to thank the professors for 
for allowing me the opportunity to have confidence in myself, whether it's on the field or in the classroom or on the campus. And I think that I really flourished. For me, my experience at UWS has truly allowed me to, to connect with who I am. You know, for such a small campus, I think it offers such a big experience. The name Superior truly fits this institution. I served as an intelligence analyst locating roadside bombs and IEDs, and they were really just cutting through up-armored Humvees that we were driving at the time. One day I saw this new vehicle that looked like, you know, it would survive anything. It's what they call an MRAP, a mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicle. And so it was so much safer for our, our troops in Iraq. And I found out that this senator that I really had never heard of, named Joe Biden, was the one who was responsible for getting these MRAPs to Iraq, for pushing this through when many said, we don't want to do this. Joe Biden said, look, this is going to save thousands of lives and limbs, and it's worth every penny that we spend on them. Joe Biden knows how to work with everyone, Democrats or Republicans, to get things done. He did this for our service members. Joe Biden knows what military families go through. He knows what it's like to send a child to war. When Joe Biden's commander in chief, he will put the safety of our troops first. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. I was diagnosed with diabetes at 13, so I got to work. I'm Quinn Nystrom, and I became a national advocate. Went door-to-door -door in Brainerd, then St. Paul. Went up to Canada to bring back insulin for a fraction of what drug companies charge here. But Pete Stauber went to Washington and voted against making healthcare and prescription drugs more affordable. I approve this message because Minnesota can't afford Pete Stopper in Congress. Season two is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Ashland County residents could be on the hook for a new tax to help make up for a big budget shortfall. Tomorrow morning, members of the Ashland County Board will consider a wheel tax as a way to make up for the deficit. According to the Ashland Daily Press, the tax would charge residents $25 per vehicle to make up for an estimated $430,000 shortfall in next year's budget. The proposal has already made it through the county highway and finance committees. The wheel tax would be tacked on to the state's annual vehicle registration fee. The board will meet at 10 a.m. Due to a rise in COVID-19 cases in Carleton County, a large number of students in Cloquet will be switching to hybrid learning. Starting on Wednesday, grades 7 through 12 will make the change after starting the year learning in person. However, K through 6 students will continue with in-person learning. The Minnesota Department of Health reports the county's case rate is currently above the threshold of 10 per 10,000 residents. There are no classes today or tomorrow, giving families more time to plan for the changes. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, the president says he'll leave Walter Reed and return to the White House to continue treatment. But tonight there are new questions about his condition and the White House outbreak among staff and journalists. That's all tonight on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. Need a flu shot? Find flu booth dates and locations at EssentiaHealth.org. It's time for the annual Subaru Love a Pet Adoption event. Join us virtually this year. For the month of October, there will be discounted adoption fees for dogs and cats, along with featured pets of the day. Visit AnimalAllies.net for featured pets and event details. Miller Hill Subaru and participating shelters are excited to find loving homes for pets and bring you this event virtually. Visit AnimalAllies.net for adoptable pets and details. So, you made it all the way up to the North Pole? Yep, and the South. But I need good Medicare coverage so I can keep exploring. Well, we have a range of Medicare Advantage plans, some including dental, vision, prescription, and travel benefits. Can I find them online? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can give us a call. Sounds good. Well, our stop is just up ahead. So that was the shortest ride I think I've ever been on. Yeah, quarantine legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta work those muscles back up. What would Joe Biden's plan do for you? Families with young children could get nearly $7,000 for child care. Buying your first home, you'll get $15,000 towards the down payment. If you get paid by the hour, your income could grow by as much as $14,000. Older seniors, your yearly Social Security benefits could increase by $1,300. The Biden plan. The wealthy and big corporations pay more. You benefit. 
I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. They're on almost every city block. But do they pose a deadly threat? In the blink of an eye, this thing destroyed my life. Then the new school trend creating controversy. New doctors. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Season 2 is here, y'all. And yes, I am in an eye patch. How much more, Kelly, can it the get? The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Welcome back to the CBS3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look over Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a quick look at some of today's top stories and a peek at what's coming up tonight at 6. President Trump is still undergoing treatment for COVID-19 at the Walter Reed Medical Center in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. The president's doctors say he may be released today. However, there are still questions about his condition. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence tested negative again this morning. He is still planning to attend Wednesday's vice presidential debate against Democratic candidate Kamala Harris. Meanwhile, a Duluth organization is trying to bring some normalcy to families on Halloween. The director of Neighborhood Youth Services and his team are preparing for their first trunk or treat event. The event will be held at the Lake City lot in Canal Park and will follow COVID-19 precautions. And tonight at 6, we're learning more after three people were shot in Duluth over the weekend. As of now, police say they are looking for a suspect, but there is no threat to the public. More details on the victims and what police are doing to find the suspect tonight at 6 and 10. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is up next. We'll see you right back here at 6.